Hi everyone, I'm Donna Dracunis, and this is a class of Procreate and other tech tips with Sequential Artists Workshop. Today we're going to talk about setting up a template for a comic in Procreate, and we have a few things we're going to do. So let me um, pin my video, my uh, iPad for a minute, and I'll just show you what we're going to do today. And my phone's asking me to do something. Okay. And um, so we're going to look at how to set up a template that has three areas in it that you may or may not have heard of before, which is the bleed zone, the trim area, and the safe zone. And first, we're going to have a demo from Beth Tremblay. She's going to show us a really cool way to set up a whole template all in Procreate, not needing any other apps. Then I have a few examples from my comics to show you how I used a template like the one Beth set up and a couple of things that I did differently for a specific reason. So I'll explain that to you. And then we're going to have a Q&A. And I put the Q&A at the end today because first, uh, Beth recorded her demo, so I'm going to play the video. And second, probably half the questions that you're going to ask, I'm going to be answering in the examples that I'm going to show you. So that is the plan for today. So I'm going to share my screen and play this video from Beth unless um, unless um, Beth has something to introduce it. So if you don't know Beth Tremblay, she's very active in SAW. She has taught some classes in um, Sequential Artist Workshop, one that I took, which was a intensive memoir, graphic memoir weekend. And um, she's got a semi-secret book that's going to be coming out this fall that she'll be telling us about on the network probably next week, I hope. So watch yeah. out for that. Um, do you have anything else to add, Beth, before I share the screen? Just quickly, because it might stave off some comment or some questions. What you're going to see in this video is a demo using specific uh, measurements that I just uh, pulled from um, something that somebody was giving as instructions on SAW. But the methodology will work with any measurements that you receive, say from a publisher or a publishing company or whatever. So the, the numbers of the measurements are not what's concrete. Um, it's the it's the method that matters. So cool. All right. Let's Thanks, watch Mark. this and then we'll look at it in action. Whoops. I forgot to click share audio with it and it has audio. So you do want the sound. Hi everybody, I'm Beth Tremblay. This is a quick video that shows you how you can, in Procreate, make a template for uh, making a comics for a physical book. It shows you how to create a document that gives you margins for the safety zone, the size of the physical book, and the bleed area. Hope it's helpful. I always find that it's helpful to write these things out on paper first. So first we wanna write down the size of our physical book which is, for this example, 8.5 by 5.5. This is the height and width of the book. Next, I like to write down the bleed margins, which is the size of the book plus 0.125 inches on all sides. That means you're going to add a quarter of an inch to the height and a quarter of an inch to the width. That results in a document that's 8.75 high and 5.75 wide. That is the size of the document we are going to wind up with for our template. The next dimension we want to figure out is the safety zone. This is a zone inside of the physical page where your drawings are sure not to get cut off. You calculate that by deducting one half an inch on each side of the page. So that means 
you're going to take off one inch of the height and one inch of the width of the physical book to calculate the safety zone. That gives us a safety zone of 7.5 inches by 4.5 inches. So just to recap, you start with the size of the physical book, which you have probably gotten from a publisher or which you have decided to use yourself. You identify a safety zone inside of that physical book for where you want your comics to be. And then you also identify bleed margins, which are larger than the physical book. The goal then of this video is to create a Procreate document with a canvas size of the bleed margins and guide frames inside of that at the size of the physical book and at the size of the safe zone. So let's get started with the demo. So here we are in Procreate. You want to tap the cross in the upper right hand side to create a new canvas. You want to go to height and width, make sure you're working in inches, and then type in the size of the document safe zone. We're going to start with the smallest possible size that we're going to work with today. Click create and you'll have your new canvas at the size of the safe zone for your upcoming comic. Now what you're going to do is fill this um, whole thing with a particular color. Doesn't matter, I'm picking blue. Now comes the magical part. You're going to go to the wrench menu in the upper left and look for the canvas submenu. Once you click on that, you'll see something that says crop and resize. Click on that and now you're going to resize this document to the size next size up, which in our case is the size of the physical book, 8.5 times 5.5. You want to click inside, make sure you're on inches, and resize the canvas. I have my DPI set at 450. Do not click on resample canvas, but do click on snapping. Click anywhere except on the done button, and then just move the frame around until it's centered. Once it's centered, click the done button, and now you have a new canvas size. This canvas is sized at the size of your physical page. I always like to create a few blank layers. It helps me think. But what you want is a new layer on the top of your layer stack, and you're gonna keep notes here so you know what you're doing. I'm a big one for having to keep notes. So I'm gonna write safe zone inside this blue margin so that I can you know, remember what it is later. Then I'm going to pick a different layer, a different color, and I'm going to fill that layer. Okay, that didn't work because the layer is in the wrong place. Make sure that your new layer, your physical layer, is, on, is underneath the safe zone layer so that you can see the margin clearly. Then go back to the layer where you're keeping your notes and write in physical size or physical book size or whatever you want. Now you can see the safe zone is in blue the physical size of your book is in pink, and we're going to do the exact same process all over again to create the size of the book that is the bleed margins. So you go back to your notes, you hit settings, inside crop and resize you hit settings, and you write the new size, this is including the bleed margins, into the settings. Again, do not resample the canvas, but do click on snapping touch anywhere in the gray screen and then recenter sometimes it takes a second until you get it completely centered then hit done now you've got a canvas that has a third margin on it pick another layer move it all the way to the bottom pick a third color anything that works for you and fill that layer with that third color now if you screwed up like i did because I put, had the wrong layer clicked, which I often do. <laughs> Just fix it. Now you have three clear zones in this template. The safe zone, the physical book zone, and your bleed margin. Again, I keep a layer where I keep notes because that just helps me. Now comes the next step. You probably don't want these colored frames behind you when you're working on this template in Procreate. So instead, we're just going to make a very simple frame. Go into your margins excuse me, your layers menu. 
uh, create a new layer, and this is where we're going to draw the frames. Pick any anchor that works for you, something thin, something that you like to look at, and we're going to draw now the frames around these two boxes that will show us these zones. So just very quickly, I like to use the line tool to make sure I get nice straight lines. You can see me placing my finger there to make sure the lines are straight. These are not um, frames for the comic itself, so they don't need to be perfect. The corners don't need to meet perfectly, but I do want them to be straight and I do want them to be accurate to the um, colored boxes I've made. So you can see this last line, it feels like it's a little short on the blue for me, so I'm just going to undo and redraw. Now I'll repeat this process with the pink section. Once you've finished drawing your frame lines, you can go back into your layers menu and turn off those colored layers because you don't need them anymore. And now you can see your three frames. The inside frame is the safety zone, the next frame out is your physical book zone, and the final place is your, your bleed margins. If you want these lines to be less distinct, of course, you can lower their opacity. But I'll show you a trick that I really like uh, to do that's a little bit different. First, raise the opacity back up to 100%. Then create a new layer, and we're going to fill that layer with a color that is non-photo blue. You can get the uh, hex code for that online. I already have it plugged into a palette, so I just went and find it, and then just fill that layer with non-photo blue. Now what you want to do is change this uh, layer type to screen and it changes your lines to non-photo blue. And of course you can use any other color you want if you want to do that, but I just choose non-photo blue. Then if you want, you can delete these other layers that have the colored blocks in them. You can delete the layer of notes if you want. Everything you want to delete, you can delete except the layer with the frames and the layer with non-photo blue. I always like to write down what, in fact, I have created on another layer with notes. So you can see here I'm writing down what I have made and the size so that I can remember later because otherwise I know I won't. Then I go back to my gallery and I rename it right away so I don't forget what it is. Usually in this case I type in the word template and the physical book size. And of course I usually make a typo which I have to fix. Then, whenever you want to use it, don't use the template, but duplicate it and draw your comics on that page. You can go in, uh, delete, or just turn off the layers where you've had your notes, make a new layer above the non-photo blue layer, and then draw your comics. And that's how it works. How fun. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I love that technique. I um, did not make mine that way when I did what I'm going to show you, but I'm definitely going to do that in the future when I create um, a new template for a new project because it, it's right in Procreate. And the way I did it was actually fussier than that. So, um, but I'm going to show you a couple examples now of uh, pages from my comics and explain how I did a, a similar, um, I used my guides like that. And was, just make sure you understand what bleed, safe zone, trim actually mean. So I'm going to spotlight my iPad again. And this is, um, this is a page from one of my folktale comics. And the area that's shown with the aqua or the blue color is the page size, the physical page size. That means where they're gonna cut the paper when your book is finished. Because usually um, in most printing processes, unlike with us at home, we have the paper eight and a half by 11, we put it in the printer, it comes out that size. Usually when things get printed, they're printed on bigger sheets of paper and they're cut. And so your physical paper size is where your comic is going to get cut. 
it's not 100% accurate because we live in the real world and things move. So that's why you have a safe zone and a bleed zone. In case the paper gets cut a tiny bit off of where it would be perfect. So I'm gonna turn off this blue layer and show you my comic here. The reason I wanna show you is I have an area, what Beth called the safe zone, and she put the, um, excuse me, put the box, uh, I think a half an inch inside, and that's where you would draw your panel borders, right? So er, your panel borders would be at that, that zone, a half inch from the edge, and everything inside your panels is automatically in the safe zone. Now I, a lot of times, draw stuff outside the panels. So I add an extra line. Um, so I have the line where, where my panels are gonna be. I have this line, this blue line here, which shows where they're gonna cut the paper. And I, have, I add another little line inside that. And um, to me, I call that the safe zone because it's the margin of error for cutting. And I don't want my panel borders to be right on that. You know, so I go with what Beth said, which is like the half an inch in. So my panel borders, no matter how big my pages are, are away from the edge. But some of my things go past that, you know, they're outside the panels, but they're still not gonna get cut off. So I, ha I have a little area there. So my husband always worries when he sees stuff like this, is that, is it okay? That's getting cut off. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I know that was, that goes, that goes very near to the cut line and it's outside that panel area. So it might get cut off. And I'll show you what this looks like on paper. Cause I think that's really handy to see. Um, it's this page and you can see that, that indeed the green plant, it does go all the way to the edge. And this bird's tail does not go all the way to the edge, but if the cutting had been a little bit further to that side or that, you know, if the cutting of the paper had shifted, it might have been cut off. So that's one, one um, thing to think about if you're drawing things that go outside the panel borders. If you get really close to your cut line, they might get cut off. Um, so that's why I put that extra line and you'll see I have and the size of my paper is the bleed zone which we'll look at next and then the the actual document size is the size the paper is cut to and then I have this little safety thing for things that are outside the panels and then this real safe zone for comics so um if you're not doing comics you know you don't have panels so they don't um Pay, you know, pay attention to that in the same way for other kind of documents. But when we're drawing the panels, you know, you don't want your panels to be right at the edge of the paper. So that's, that's um, usually you want a margin around it. Okay, so this next one I wanna show you has a full bleed in it. This is what a bleed zone is for. So again, I have the blue color showing where the paper will be cut, but you'll notice I have purple stuff going out past that to the edge of my document into the bleed zone. So I'll turn off the blue layer. So why my cut zone would actually be like right here, my cutting, my panels are there, but I made this go all the way out to the bleed zone because in the actual comic, I want the color to go all the way to the edge of the page. Mm. Now, if I had not added that extra bleed outside the paper size, if they cut it a little bit wrong, there would be a tiny sliver of white on the edge. So you're adding some extra. So in case the, all the bleed zone is for is if you have something you want to go all the way to the edge, you go past the edge that way if the paper gets cut a little bit wrong, your thing still goes to the edge of the paper. So that's what I did in this one. And I have a, a, a layer of color that I wanted to fill the page all the way to the end of the paper. Now you don't always do that. 
this is something else I, I had printed recently that I did not want it to bleed. So I put my whole art inside that safe zone that Beth showed so that I would have a fairly even white border all the way around it. So the bleed zone is for when you want stuff to go off the edge and the safe zone is for when you want stuff not to go off the edge. And you have that gap in between those two, which is where if the cutting tool cutting machine is not exactly accurate it doesn't mess up anything and this was not perfect because this paper folds and so the and and it got cut in some way so this this edge is like a 16th of an inch different than this edge and that's that's why you have those zones there because of the shifting in the machinery that happens in uh cutting and folding so that's what it looks like if you don't do a full bleed on something. Usually on my book covers, I do a full bleed. Um, I like the cover design to go all the way to the edge. But this in this project, I didn't want to bother with thinking about that all year. So it's not going to have any bleeds. Okay. Now this one, one more page I want to show you here is in the same book. It's actually the page right next to the one we just looked at. So I wanted this one to have the color outside and this one to have the color inside the panel. So I kind of reversed it, but I put this little, this statue here and I wanted the statue to bleed and the sign for the statue. And so on the bottom, you can see here, my little statue comes out past that blue zone, which is the cutting size of the paper and all the way into that bleed zone. So in just in case, and I'll just draw it. So just in case they cut the paper a little bit wrong and cut it up, so I have a painting brush, not a drawing brush. Just in case they, I don't know what brushes I got here. There we go. Oh, I'm probably on a transparent layer. That's why it's doing that. If they cut it here, it would still come to the edge because I added it into that bleed zone. And on this side of it, it comes out of my panels, but it doesn't come close to where the paper is going to be cut. And can, can it I worked make an out fine. Oh, I just want to say also that what else she did, what else Donna did there, is that she made sure that the essential part of that, that photograph, et cetera, is inside the safe zone. The words which is thrown yes. right, are up inside that safe zone. Yes. So all my tech, my text is inside that safe zone where the panel borders. So even if this got messed up, you know, really badly, I wouldn't lose my text. It's, it's, it's very, it's usually if it gets messed up, it's the 16th of an inch or something, but you want to have margin for error. I wanted to make sure my text did not get cut and my text was not right on the edge. So I put it mm -hmm. inside that zone, exactly. Yeah. And then um, the cover, just like I was showing you on that cover, I wanted to show you one thing on this cover. If I did not want this cover to have a full bleed, um, I would have made a white background or a no background. I made it with black because um, may as well use the black, the black background instead of putting a black layer in. Um, but if I didn't want to bleed, I would have had to put in a layer. So I just added a layer and I'm going to fill it black. But if I didn't want the full bleed, I would have to bring that black and all my other stuff inside to my safe zone. So not just the black, but these other background elements, I would also want to bring inside my safe zone so nothing was outside of that and i'd have to go through and figure out all the things that are sticking out because a few more things are sticking out so you can bring them all in or i could go to the top and select a rectangle that's the the size of the safe zone see how accurate i can be make a selection right invert it and then i could fill the outside of the selection with white, undo my selection. 
So that would cover up any stuff that's sticking out of the safe zone. So if I didn't want this to be full bleed, I would have to get rid of a lot of it to make sure that it would have a full white margin. So you don't just bring it in a tiny bit if you don't want it to bleed. It's either inside the safe zone or all the way out if you're trying to fill the page. And then odds and ends, as you saw in the one where the person's hair or the bird's tail was sticking out of the panel, that's okay. And you know, when I'm doing those things, I know they might get cut off and that thing might be on the edge of the page. If it's important, it stays in the safe zone. Same thing with the text on these. See, even though this has a full bleed, my titles are way inside the safe zone. So, um, so if you um, fill something by accident and you want to unfill it, it's just a two finger top, tap. Uh, anything you want to undo is a two finger tap or this little, there's a little undo key over here as well that you can tap if you don't want to use the two finger tap. So it doesn't matter what you do in Procreate, you can undo it with that or a two finger tap. Um, so the undo is the same for, for any of those things that you are doing. But if I was, if I had designed this with a full bleed and then decided I didn't want it with the full bleed before I did all that stuff I just did, I would duplicate it and do it on the second copy. Anytime I'm going to do something drastic to a document that I like how it is, I make a duplicate of it first. So if I really mess up, sometimes you do something and you and you know I'm really quick to go back to the gallery. Well, then you lose the ability to undo it. So making a duplicate before you mess around with it is super important. Okay, and I have one more thing I want to talk about before we go into like uh, any generic questions about templates and stuff. So um, I don't know if you can see this that close up here, but I have three documents here that are um, five and a half by eight and a half inches, the same size that Beth created. So the way I made that is the same way Beth did. Now, um, you know, she created it and then added, you know, started with the safe zone and added more. I just want to show you um, about DPI. So I just made it eight and a half by five and a half. It could be, you know, it, whatever the size is, it is. This is just an example. Okay. So I, I went into the plus sign on the new canvas. And I went to inches and I typed 5.5 and 8.5. And then the first one I did at 300 DPI. And look, I get 155 layers for that document on my iPad. Your mileage will vary based on what size iPad you have, how much memory it has. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna say 450 DPI. I have 66 layers only. And then sometimes people like to make documents that 600 DPI, I only have 35 layers. Technically, you only need 300 DPI for printing at your size. So I can go from 35 to 155 layers by sticking to the 300 DPI. Now there's a lot more details. Sometimes I work at 450 DPI. I never work at 600 DPI personally, um, but I want to show you that one thing because the DPI limits your number of layers, also makes the files much bigger in how much space they use up on the hard drive and whatnot. And I wanna show you what's going on. So this is my 300 um, DPI, eight and a half by 11 file. Okay, I mean, eight and a half by five and a half. Um, the inches are really irrelevant. What's really important is how many pixels are in your file. So this has 2,550 pixels up and down and 1,650 pixels across. So if I take those numbers and divide them by 300, it's the opposite of 
take starting with the inches and multiplying by 300. Okay, I'm going to show you um, something. I'm going to take this layer, which is 2550 by 1650, and I'm going to copy it. Uh, three finger swipe down is what most of you probably have for getting the copy and paste menu. I changed mine to four finger tap. That's why I had that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to open the 450 DPI one and I'm going to paste. Oh my gosh, these were both eight and a half by 11 canvases. How come that's so small? Because it was only 1,650 pixels across, it's, uh, 25 something up. And this one is 3,800 pixels up and down and 2,400 pixels across. So just because it said eight and a half by 11, it is not the same thing. So um, from 450 to 300, I think that's, that's okay. A lot of comics artists like to work a little bigger and bring it back down um, for printing because it sharpens things up. So, so, go, so drawing your stuff at 450 DPI and then saving a, a final PDF at 300 DPI is very similar to that process. But look what happens if I go into the 600 DPI. My canvas, that was 800 by, you know, eight same inches is only one quarter of the size of the 600 DPI. I doubled the DPI, but I actually quadrupled the surface area of my canvas. So it's going to be four times as big on the hard drive. It's going to slow everything down. Um, and then why is that important? Because if I wanted to shrink this, because we always think we know we can't get bigger with bitmap drawings, but we think we can get smaller. But if I wanted to shrink this layer with the text and, and heck, I'll draw a flower, whatever, right? If I wanted to shrink this down to 300 DPI, it has to fit in that. Let's change the color of that so we can see what's going on. So now it's not black anymore. I'll move this one above it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to shrink it so it fits into that. That's how much smaller the 300 DPI version is. You see how tiny everything gets? Your lines get thinner and, you, and things that might've had a little open space in them might close. It's a big amount of change is what I'm getting at. So to, to, to you would never reduce a hand-drawn comic to one quarter of the size for printing. So I just wanted to point that out because I did notice that um, there are people sometimes that like to draw at 600 DPI, but I advise against it for that reason. Okay, so that is all I wanted to show you in addition to um, Beth's thing. I'm definitely using your technique, Beth. So um, let's just go over anything else you guys want to talk about, about templates and measurements and so forth. Donna, could we talk about margins? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just, I lately I've been reading so many graphic memoirs and I really have a problem with, with the inside of the margin being so, so um, small. So can you talk to when you're doing a double, double In a page? spread? Yes. Ah, okay. So my booklets are very small. So you, they open flat because they're so small. Okay. My booklets that I made have only 20, 20, 24 pages. So they, you know, no big deal. But if you have a big book, sometimes it doesn't open flat. So, um, and this is something you'd have to work on with your publisher and decide. But if you had a big book that didn't open flat, you wouldn't want to have the same safe zone margin in the center of your spread that you had on the outside. You might wanna move it over an extra quarter or half an inch. So when the book is like this, your pages don't crash into each other as if there was no gutter. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a physical thing with the way the book gets put together. 
that makes that happen. So in, a lot of times, um, and you might see this if you've used word processing or desktop publishing, we used to call it page layout software. If you ever used anything like that in the past, you may see some of the templates, they might have like a half, a half, a half, three quarters for the default margins. And that's why, because when you, when you um, depending how your book is bound and how many pages it has, it may not be able to open flat and you may need extra blank paper inside there. Is that what you wanted to know about, Erla? Yes, yes. So it's so really when you're doing these layouts, um, almost you don't have to worry about it because it's in the publishing end of things mm -hmm. that well, you're worried you're, you right. are worried about this so, and they're they're putting it together. Well, you're yeah, gonna but, have to eventually worry about it. And it comes when it comes out to be an issue is if you have bleeds. Um, if you don't have bleeds, it's really easy to expand your um it's really easy to expand your canvas on one side or put your put your images into a different program where you paste the image in and you have it a quarter inch from the center edge and things like that if you have bleeds though you're gonna have to um redraw them to reach that new bleed area and you won't know that unfortunately until you until your publisher tells you what they want you to do like what bet what happened to beth right exactly i know beth had to go through that right i so i have started well i've done a couple book covers lately and the last one i did was a children's book and what i so what i've been doing is i take a screenshot of the template from who's ever publishing that gives me their template and I put that as a layer yes. underneath and mm -hmm. that's how I've been doing it and then for my daughter's illustrated book I did templates so I could do I did a template for a spread and I did a template to with the gutters included in it and right. since I've done that, now I have, and I, I kind of, again, made up my own template on Procreate, but I have that for each page. So when, you know, if it's a, because then it matters when you're doing a book. And if, like you said, if it's a, if it's a, just a few pages, it's fine. There's not, you know, anything to worry about, but if it's a bigger book, then you right. have to allow mm -hmm. for that to you know be a gutter space right and if it's perfect bound like these are called this is called um saddle stitch although it's really stapled where they just have a few pages and you just staple it but books that have a flat a flat spine on them um they're, they're put together a completely different way they may have several of these that are stuck then glued together or sewn together and the way right. the book is manufactured will change how much of a gutter or space between pages you need. Right. And, and I, that's I really just, hard if you don't if you don't know ahead of time, right? Yeah, I just think it's easier to at least have in your head, like if you know what side one, like if you have a one page that's going, you know whether it's a right-hand page or a left-hand page, if you kind of know that ahead of time, mm -hmm. it makes life a lot simpler. Yes. So if you're going to do something with a publisher or self-publishing, you can decide all that ahead of time. If you're going to get a publisher for a graphic memoir, anyway, you usually make most, if not all of it, before you pitch it. Um, so that makes it rough. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't know any way around that. Like if you get hired by a publisher to do comic art or to make a book, that's a different thing. And then they will give you the specs up front. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. or, Cause yeah, cause yeah. I don't mm -hmm. see any way around. Like if you, if you go with a publisher and they say, oh, okay, this has to be here. Then you have to go through. And I think 
Beth had to do that. Right. Yeah. And me size yeah. all your, but you can still have the bleed area accounted for. Exactly. And then you can just pop in, you know, right. then you just have to change which mm -hmm. yeah. age orientation mm -hmm. things are. Right. Right. Okay. Betsy has a hand raised. I, I have a, oh, I have another question, question okay you can go betsy you're up after deb deb has another question what's so beth what is non-photo blue and what does that do well i just picked it at some point in my work so i use it but when you were work when people work uh, on analog non-photo blue is a particular color you can buy non-photo blue pencils because you could draw on it and photocopiers would not pick that color up. And or also if you're doing digital um, manipulation, you can set your photo um, your photo editor to drop everything that's non-photo blue. It's a, and so that's just why I used it. So it's called non-photo because it doesn't pick up in copiers and th it's this, you know, kind of a holdover from really from even pre-digital age. You can use any color you want. I just happened to use that one, but I didn't know what color it was. But if you Google um, hex code, you know how colors have like that six digit number. Everyone is unique. If you Google hex code non-photo blue, it comes right up. And in Procreate, you can type the hex code in and you'll get the exact color. So oh, you can? Yeah. yes, you can. It is cool. A yep. lot of comics artists uh, use that the kind of the way Beth did. And I know a few that use red instead because they just mm -hmm. like it better or they can see it better. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, in Procreate where we were looking at the palettes, I'm not going to share mine again for right now, but we were looking at the palettes, you know how it has the disc in the box and the different, mm -hmm. and you can look at the palette. So one of those, when you click on, has a space where you can type in the hex code. Oh. So um, I don't know which one it is, but poke around. We don't usually, yeah. you know, usually we use the disc or the palette view, but there's several other views in there that you can uh, select colors different ways. Oh, that's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. And the DPI thing, that was, that was very good. Um, I'm just wondering if you change the DPI, like if you have a, so you kind of explained it, but I think I have it backwards. Like if you, if you went from a 600 DPI to a 300 DPI and you change the DPI after on your canvas, does that make your lines? It's That's a whole nother complicated thing. Um, Basically, um, yes, but basically if you take a 300 DPI thing and you shrink it to 300 DPI, your line, it's so much of a drastic change. Some of your lines can get so thin that they almost disappear and little open spots. If you have like little circles, they might look like they get closed up because it's such a drastic change. Um, we'll talk change more about DPI. Um, and that and a little bit later, but what you're talking about is what Beth said not to do when she was working the canvas, which is resampling. When, when you resample, um, that's when it actually changes okay. the pixels and gets rid of, yeah, mushes your art around. Okay. You, in, yeah. So, um, but that's that what was, happened. That was a very yeah. good thing too, Beth. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And it's not quite, snapping, it's like not using a copy machine to shrink something. You know, if you shrink it too much, you lose this detail. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Betsy. Hey, thanks guys. Um, I, I look forward to that DPI lesson. So let's do I'll that. add it to my list. Thank you. Um, and if I were to look for this particular one, Donna, on YouTube, what, what would I look for? How, I, they made it, they created a, a playlist for the Procreate videos on the Saw YouTube channel. Okay. So, so you can look in that and then in that playlist, <laughs> it should just show up in date order. So this will be the newest one when they get it uploaded in a couple okay. of days. Thank you. And I made mine, because I didn't know about this, I made mine in um, Affinity. Mm -hmm. And I have to go back because I didn't add the bleed to it but I think I can figure it out. Um, do you so, have things that go all the way to the edge of the page? I do not. So can the then printers- it, it probably doesn't matter then. Okay. 
Let the printer lead, do it. Lead zone is for when you have things that bleed off the edge of the page. Okay, I didn't know if it would mess them up, but I guess it won't. They'll just no, so long as they know that you don't have that, it should be okay. Um, okay. But you should check with your printer. Okay. Um, but since you have nothing that actually bleeds, they probably will be okay with what you have. Okay, great. And the last thing doesn't really have to do with this, but you did mention about making a duplicate. So you're working all day on this Procreate file and before you go out to gallery, you duplicate it. After you go out, you have to duplicate in the gallery. After, yeah, okay. So I thought you said before you go out and if you have 115, uh, you know, layers, you, you can't, okay. So you go out oh. to gallery. So what I'm saying is I have this file here and I decided I want to change all the colors on it. Before I even open it, I'm going to duplicate it. Okay, then you go and in. Then that way I have, and then maybe change the name of the other one. Sorry, maybe change the name of this one to page 20 old or something. Yeah, yeah. So that way I can go back to that if I really mess up the one I'm changing. And okay. I do that at several stages along my yeah. process. Um, I guess they would probably equate to pencil inking and coloring, except I don't really work that way when I do digitally. I may be like, you know, I do it all mixed up. Right. But I, I, several times along the way, I will make a whole new, I'll copy yeah. my whole stack. Oh, you do copy I leave the, the old one as a backup in case I want to go backwards on something. Got you. Okay. So I'm like Beth, which is I put a layer up on top. I call it the reference layer, and that's where I document my notes. I do that right. Too. And so when I do a like, I think of it's just kind of like a quick backup throw off in case I need to recover my butt. Right. I just write in really big letters on top of that backup before I manipulated the color layers. So oh, before yeah. I did what, and then you know later in the day when I'm I'm like like where the direction's going. I feel like I didn't make a mistake. I dump that canvas because otherwise I'm always out of data, but yeah. I like that with your notes, like you leave it on top or you leave that layer on. And then you, and then you just, I just, un, I turn it off most yeah. of the time, but yeah. when but I want to look there. at what, what went on, then I've got it there. Yeah. I stink at that. So I don't do that a lot. So I have paid so many times with projects because <gasps> that's why I do it now where I do a thing and then, you know, I go away and six, eight months later, I look down and go, damn, I really like that. And I have How did I do no that? clue what brush I used. Zero. Oh, right. So, so you, you make a note of your brushes on that note page. And size of brush. Yeah. I need to do that because I've been having that problem. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. It yeah. don't have to be six weeks either. It could be about six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Forget. Yeah, me too, actually. I have the, a, the other like, thing I do is project, I create. For each project I do. Um, well, if it's more than just one comic, like, so for if it's a book or a series or say my diary comics, I make a folder of the brushes I use for that set. So I don't have to go looking for them all the time. And I tend to, I mean, I have a ton of brushes, but they probably 90% of what I do is probably with the same six brushes, <laughs> but it takes a while to figure that out you know, what's just like when regular art, you have your favorite pens and pencils and stuff. But these don't run out of ink. Yeah. <laughs> well, they the can. Don't wear you can down. make a brush that, you can make a brush that runs out of ink. <laughs> well, your Apple pencils can wear down and you need new tips. Yeah, yeah. True. I actually have had them die on me completely. Like not just new tips, but dead pencil. So yeah that's tricky so uh if you're on a deadline that's that's you gotta go run out to the apple store in the middle of the night or something if i Did you have your app your apple pencils die and not be revivable beth yes not, yeah, not, my to, not my to, me too yeah i've not had it happen with the apple pencil two but i have had it ha oh. i did happen twice with my apple pencils one i'm, I'm like i don't know three hours or more from an apple store so um, if I was doing this as a job, if I had a job and deadlines, I would have uh, multiple stuff. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I would too. Yeah. Amazon. You know, you wait. I know, I know, I hate them too, but sometimes you have to. 
if you wait till the last minute and you know that you know you can finish it between the hours of you know 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. You, unless you have an extra pencil and you could be in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Janice has a good tip. Keep your pencils charged. That's true. Um, if you if they keep them charged, you don't need to let them run out of charge or anything. Keep that charged all the time. That's why I like the Apple Pencil too, because it just sticks on your iPad with the magnet and it's always charging. Yeah. Same thing with your, well, I have Apple everything, but same thing with your iPads and stuff. Keep them charged because every, yeah. every time you run out of charge, it, it adds it makes, to their cycle. It subtracts cycles. it from the And after a certain amount have. of yeah. cycles, <laughs> it'll die. It's a BS thing that they do to you, I think. I don't know if it really um, has to work that way, but it definitely does. Wow. Yeah. So. They won't admit it though. When you ask, they say, every one of them is different. You never right, right. know what you're gonna get. It could be it's like running out of toner, right? Oh yeah, how come it looks full? And my printer says I have no cyan, right? Yeah, right. okay, whatever. <laughs> I just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> if it peep, if it prints, shake that, shake that thing. Sometimes you can, depends on the brand and everything, but whatever. Anyway, I hope you guys found that useful. I know I'm going to do the next project I do the way Beth said, because um, yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, remember, you can get templates from printers, Mixam, Print Center USA, whoever you're working with, publishers, they all have templates and stuff like that that you can get from them, but they're probably not for Procreate. So you're probably going to have to figure out how to get them, you know, into Procreate. They probably have it for Photoshop or InDesign and or in my they might have it as a JPEG, stuff like that. So well, like I said, I just take a screenshot. Yeah. So and Donna. You make your canvas the size you want and you put and their I've thing in it. Yeah, I've done that too. Yeah. So sometime in the future, you have, you know, I've talked about this somewhere in the past. You and I both have a grid that we also lay into our templates that divides like by half and third and quarters, both horizontally and vertically. Right. We could see that grid underneath what you were showing us today. It might be fun to, to talk about because I use that as well. Um, I drew one out myself and it, it was just a lifesaver. Um, it might be fun to talk about how do you generate a grid like that um, for whatever size canvas you're working in. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. not, not, not today, but sometime in the future. Yeah. Because I have found that super helpful. Grids help. Um, I break them sometimes, but grids help. Oh, totally. Really help with the flow of your um, comic or any publication you're making. Grids help it um, be easy for people to understand what's going on <laughs> as a reader. Yeah. So I will add grids and DPI to my list of topics that we'll cover. But um, Beth had made this video. So we I decided to do it this week. Next week, we're going to go back to the adjustments menu and do the liquify stuff. And then we'll go back to other topics on the list. So